Hey everyone, welcome to Spotlight Hour. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Tonight's guest is Yost from Jazz Inc. Dioramas. How are you doing tonight? Yeah, I'm good. Evening, very good. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> right, it's, evening. It, for you. it is already 8 p.m. Yeah, yeah. So good morning to you. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, uh, yeah, almost. Yeah, it's about 11 o'clock here on my end. Cool. So oh, it's very cool. I appreciate we were, we were able to get the schedule set together, you know, with the time zones yeah. and everything. Um, yeah, I mean, so, you know, I was curious, um, through, through, I pretty much ask everybody this because we're all collectors at some point, but have you been collecting your whole, whole life or? No, I, 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 w- I wouldn't call myself a, I wouldn't have called myself a collector until like 2014. Hmm. Um, I was really into Star Wars uh, mm. um, but, and, and anything that was like cool. Um, so I don't know. I was a kid from the 80s. So it was uh, the A team and, and Knight Rider. And oh, of course. There, I, I don't know. So in, in the Netherlands, you had these um, these little books where you could co- and you collect the cards and you could put them in the books. Right. And so that was that was huge in the 80s in the Netherlands. And uh, so and I love to collect that and get all the cards and uh, for the A-team and for Knight Rider and all that. And then later, um, I, I love movies like Labyrinth. Um, and I don't really I, I used to and I still do get deep into that kind of thing and then uh, look for the book and all that sort of thing. And I had a lot of the the Kenner stuff when I was a kid. And my, my uncle, Uncle Ben, so on my dad's side is the oldest brother. Uh, he was the first collector I knew. So uh, he had, uh, he, he also introduced me to Star Wars and he had all the Kenner action figures. And he actually had a room, a separate room, which again, in the Netherlands, it's not a lot of space. So that was, that was a big thing, right? right? And, uh, and so he had like, like a, you know, di- diorama setups basically, right? So a big at, at, and a snow speeder on top and then Luke hanging from that. And then Ooh, like, yeah. even, I, I never even saw it in the store, but he had like a meditation chamber type thing back then even. So, mm. um, yeah, so, so that was, that was my introduction into, into collecting. And I, I wasn't into like getting them all or completing something except for the, 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 the collectible cards, but, um, I, I just love to, to play with them and, 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 um, uh, the, the the coolest story from from my from my childhood was that my my uh, th- that same uncle ben he was a, an interior designer and he did uh, like for um uh, he also did for a, a very cool toy store and he uh, he got it so that we could come to that toy store the day before opening when everything was full and stock and fresh and and so Ooh. yeah yeah and <laughs> even then cuz th- it was very hard to get um Kenner figures back then. My first figure was Hammerhead because that's the only one that my local toy store carried at that time. Oh wow! And so yeah, and so and we end up with this big Kenner display and all the figures up there. And that yeah, well that that sort of feeling, that rush, and I mean everybody who's who's watching this probably can relate to something like that. But it was when it come to came to collecting, it was it was a, a, the the YouTube algorithm really. Oh really? Uh, yeah, I, I I I don't I don't even know how I got there, but. It was, uh, I, I think it was IGN who did like a, a Comic Con special, and they were to the went to the sideshow booth, and uh, they showed what was on the sideshow booth, and my my mind was blown because again in the Netherlands you don't see that kind of thing, and I, right? And, and 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 just I remember seeing the the Sauron premium figure format, uh, uh, and 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 the, all the incredible detail and the and the what the the, the uh, the, the one on the horse uh what, what's his name the the, the dark rider uh of mordor again premium format because i i at first i went back and forth between premium format stuff and six scale and the premium format stuff allowed for more dramatic posing and had a, a visual impact when you came into the room right right but i, I but i um i love that for the six scale with the posing and reposing that you could um it, it became a fresh figure when you when when you did that so I went back and forth until I settled on on the six scale stuff, um, and discovered it like Hot Toys and uh, a couple of sideshow figures. Like the very first Darth Vader I had was a sideshow Vader that was way before Hot Toys even got into Star Wars, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where they had their license. So, exactly. So, um, so that yeah, that's 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 when I really got into collecting, and I had a, a, a yeah a lot of stuff uh, that way, and I, I tried pretty much anything. I, I even I made a custom um, one-to-one scale Iron Man figure. So. Uh, oh, you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just so um, it, it was Marvel and Star Wars for me, and uh, 
uh, trying a bunch of things out, but again, space limitations being what they were, um, th that was a, the, another good thing of the of the of the six scale stuff. Right? The nice sweet sweet spot between size and and detail and and all of that. So yeah, that's 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 how I got into the collecting and uh, and tried a tried a bunch of stuff. Um, I, uh, I had a, a while where I did some props as well, like the cool lightsabers that they. What was the brand again? They had the, even the sign plaques with the actor's name on it to the uh, Mark Hamill. Oh, well. It wasn't like the Master Replicas, right? Um, was it Master Replicas? I don't what remember. Was it as props? I don't remember. Something yeah, like that. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, so, but uh, yeah, really for me now, it's all, all six scale stuff. Well, I, and space is, like you were mentioning, that's a big factor, right? Because can right. you imagine all of a sudden you're 10, 12 statues deep? Uh, not, not a lot of room to, to expand. Nope. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Nah, that's kind of how, where I'm at too. I have a couple statues, but for the most part, it's, it's six scale. Cause like you said, the, the, the size is the perfect size for space, you know, and, and posability and, 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 and creativity is my main thing too, right? Yeah. Because statues are great, but they're static. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so you were initially just kind of making them, making things just as a hobby and then. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, I I um I was a bit of a weird kid because I um I, I I like the technical side, but I also like the the, the management side of things or or the, the or the creative side of things, right? And so uh, in my job, I never I didn't always used to get um, a way to express that, and so I always had side projects, and I designed guitars and amplifiers, built them, and. Um, and then when oh. the, with the yeah, and then with the um, when the collecting came, I I started doing things uh, surrounding that right. And my my main issue with the collecting was, especially with the hot toy stuff. Um, it it was very good and very expensive, but if you just put it on a desk somewhere and you didn't have good lighting and you didn't have an environment or something like that, mm. it was hard to get away from the. The, the doll look for me right and so i was always looking uh, for a way to upgrade to upgrade the display and 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 have it uh, have more like a museum grade display and so i came up with the clear acrylic tiles you might have seen them floating around the internet uh, yeah I did that yeah. for a while yeah i did that for a while and then um i remember this very specifically so my 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 little nephew's birthday is on january 1st my wife was driving there and i got a a, a text from a guy a, a fellow collector in the netherlands uh, and uh, he showed me this setup with a diorama, and I'm like, "Whoa, okay." I'm because uh, I had a project for a year, and this was January first, and I'm like, "I know what my project for this year is going to be." So, I was uh, I designed this big Death Star diorama for myself, basically, and mm. uh, uh, and and did the um, you know and made sure it had the, the right lighting angles, and it and and it just looked like a Death Star, and it was a big because I had. Uh, I had a couple of Star Wars figures, so like around uh, like ten figures, and I wanted to have space for that. So it was a four foot by uh, I don't know. So I don't know. I'm not so good at feet, but four to four feet wide, and what was it then? Uh, like two feet high, high, two feet deep, something like that. It was pretty pretty big. P pretty good size for six scale. Yeah, yeah. And so um, and and so I worked on that for months, right? So after after jobs, uh, after my job, and 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 family time, and all all that sort of thing. Um, had to figure out how this was going together because it was double wall walled, so I could get the lighting correctly and all that sort of mm. thing. It was, it was a pretty complex puzzle. And uh, long story short, I finished that, put it on. I think it was still the Sideshow Freaks forum. That was way before I started getting into Facebook and Facebook groups. And the people just lost their mind over it. Right? Well, yeah, absolutely. And and and, and so um, I kept getting requests. So, well. Are you selling these? Are you? No, 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 no. It's just for me. Just for me. Just for me. And um, and then people, uh, uh, after about a dozen requests, uh, people are like, can't you make this? Can't you make that? I'm like, no, man. It was a lot of work. It was very right. expensive. Right. Like solid. you said, it took you months, right? Exactly. And now a couple, uh, uh, some of that work would be redundant the second time, like uh, the design and the, and the and the machining programs to make the parts and all that sort of thing. But then still assembling it painting it weathering it everything electronics you know it was a that was still a lot of work and uh, i still remember this was a uh, number 36 message 
the guy from France said, well, what if you did it like Ikea style? Because one of the other things I, I was like, I, I don't want to assemble everything. And when you uh, ship that out, you're shipping out a lot of air, right? Because a diorama is basically that. And I, it wasn't designed to be shipped worldwide. So uh, he said, you, you don't have to do the assembly. You can flat pack it. Um, so it's not you're not shipping a lot of air. Uh, it doesn't get damaged in transport because you're shipping parts. And I'm like, hmm. hmm. And I'm, I was like, all right, so let's see if we can get a dozen people together. Right, so the and, wheels are starting to turn a little yeah, bit. Like, yeah, mm, yeah. Maybe, maybe I can do this. Yeah, but I was still like bluffing. I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, let's let's get a dozen people together uh, and, and we'll see then. And I'm like, we're never going to get there, right? Because it was, again, it was very pricey. It was a, a very, very large display and it's all uh, solid Perspex, but mostly solid machined aluminum, right? So it's very expensive stuff. And, and it, I had like, I had them in, in, in 24 hours, those people. So, okay. I had to do a little redesign because again, it wasn't designed to be a build kit. It wasn't, it was just for my personal use. So I did a little redesign. We, we did that. And then uh, as, as soon as that project was done, I'm like, okay, we're done. Uh, but then there were, there were other people like, yeah, this is very cool and very beautiful. And I want to get on this list, but it's just, too large or too expensive or too both mm. you know can't you do something because we use de details details whatever right um, right can't you do something in 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 that size um and so okay i thought about that again and again all right let's see if we get some people together we got people together and we did the same concept but then detail size so that's um that's how that came about and then people were like yeah okay detail is cool but Actually, it's too small for six scale for a diorama, anyway, right? It really is. Yeah. So you're you're forcing uh, uh, perspective, and you're forcing something to be uh, well. A, a, a six scale Death Star diorama for details would not, is not exactly six to six scale, right? Um, mm. And and um, this was when Hot Toys came into the the game as well. And I don't know if you've ever seen this, but they had like uh, this this very cool show display at some some cons uh when, when they had the, the the white tentative entryway um and they had their darth vader and and the stormtroopers in there uh and 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 people thought that was cool and they were like can't you do something like that and then don't force it into a detail scale don't uh blow it up like you did the the other one in huge huge size and that that's when they came up with the the idea for what they call the the true scale so that would be uh, okay. Some, yeah. So something that is true to six scale, but uh, something that would fit. And uh, well, I don't know how the group came to this, but the IKEA Besta and Stuva range were also very popular. Make something that fits there, right? Right. But so, but this is still just we're still talking very much a hobby project at that point, right? So it's just very grassroots, community driven, uh, and almost against my will, it grew. Um, grew to the point where. I needed some help because again, I still had a full-time day job. I had kids, we have a dog, mm -hmm. the, the dog needs to walk. I, I, I like uh, to exercise and play uh, instruments. So I didn't have a, a lot of time left. And so my dad who was retired, uh, well, he was looking for something to do, right? Right. And so my dad got in on it and um, he could make, um, he could do i taught him all to do all everything like how to do the airbrushing and weathering and all that sort of thing for the for the production so um so yeah that was basically the next step after after that and and slowly it morphed into something bigger i guess well that's cool that so is is really like a like a father son kind of project at that point then. yeah 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 definitely yeah yeah definitely around 2017 we're still we're talking now um and we were doing some more uh things people came up with lots of ideas so we did the carbon freezing chamber and we did the meditation mm -hmm. chamber and um i forget we, we did uh, the emperor throne room and uh that sort of thing and then people asked for the land speeder we got a lot of requests for the land speeder now we were uh, up until then we were basically always doing dioramas and it, and it, and it was because it's empire stuff it's a lot of industrial design right which worked right because I, I could do the designs on my computer and then um, I, I, there was a local machine shop that allowed me to use their machine time in the down times like uh, at night or during the, the weekends and, and just run a couple of programs 
uh, oh wow some, some aluminum that, and 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 that's how i got the parts made right that's but awesome that, that's good that's having somewhere that you can go and just come yeah, on in them, on some I, off I, hours yeah, 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 exactly. Because otherwise, this would have been dead in the water, right? Because how do you get these parts made? And they're <laughs> CNC'd uh, 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 in several layers. Uh, so, so like a Death Star wall is basically a, a thick aluminum plate that is like two and a half D with several levels to get those mm. patterns in there. And then uh, we, um, when we, when we were first asked to do the land speeder and the, the, we could get enough numbers so that we can make different kinds of molds because it's that that's a very complex round shape you could never see and see that well you could see and see that but those then those things would cost somewhere in the four figure range right right, right. production's gonna yeah costs yeah. are really gonna escalate yeah yeah so you need some way to do the the casting and make molds and all that sort of thing so that was the first time we got into molds and um found different suppliers to do that for us and um tried all kinds of things, roto casting and uh, well, uh, silicone molding and, and resin and all that sort of thing. We, we learned how to deal with that. Um, and then we were approached uh, by someone who said, well, okay, we've heard that the, 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 the BVS Batmobile is definitely off from Hot Toys, right? Could you do that? Yeah. And I'm like, well, normally I would have said no, but I really wanted that for myself. <laughs> um, and with everything we'd learned uh, in in the years previous, um, we were like, okay, this should be doable. Again, we needed a a, 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 a good number of people to be able to, because the the biggest issue with all these projects is they're so complex, it takes a lot of time. It's not the fixed cost. Oh, sorry, the the variable cost, like the cost that goes into the material for each unit. The biggest cost is always going to be the fixed cost. So the the, the design, the R&D, and mostly the molds, right? Right. Um, if you want to do really the, the stuff we're doing right now, well, I don't know if you've seen, if you're a member of the closed Facebook group, but I've been sharing the molds we've made for the, and and and, and parts being made for the 1966 Batmobile in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's some serious investment, right? And you have to have the numbers. So for the, because we're officially licensed with Warner Brothers, now we can do the, the numbers to such a degree that we can make those molds and make it cost effective, right? Right. I mean, it's still extremely limited edition compared to what the other makers uh, are doing, um, which is of course why our prices need to be higher uh, because those mold costs have to come out of a, a, lo a, a lower number of people. But then again, you know, you're going to have something that's only, there's, there's only uh, so many of them in the world and a lot less than all the other stuff in your collection. Right. So, yeah. So, right, very small run. Yeah. And, and so it, it kind of, yeah, it's, it, this is really a community different pro, uh, driven project. Uh, th basically everything we've made after that first diorama I made for myself was based on community ideas, community desires and, uh, and community support. That's the, every every single project is like that yeah it, it almost sounds like it was it just kind of uh it just kind of happened right it just kind of yeah. evolved into it wasn't like hey you know what i'm gonna do this and have like a full-fledged plan just starting with yourself and then showing it off and then all of a sudden like you said the community interest was just so overwhelming and you're like well i have I have opportunities to go here in the factories in the evening do things work it out before you know it you, now you're here. Now, like you said, you're licensed yeah. with Warner Brothers and making vehicles. and Yeah, and, and uh, I've tried to pump the brakes a couple of times because I really <laughs> had no no intention of starting a new company. I'd done that, been there, done that. And uh, like I said, I have a day job and uh, or had a day job. Now I'm mostly doing a little bit of consulting business on the side still, but uh, this is taking up almost all of my time now. But uh, oh, I yeah, can imagine. It, it, yeah it, but it was, it was, it, it was, weird random incredibly cool and and humbling you know to just be like the appointed like the appointed r d custom shop for the community to mm. make the stuff that otherwise wouldn't get made right that, that's and it's because of the trust and support by the community that we're here and um and that we can do these things and now like the 1966 which is incredibly complex i wouldn't have been able to do that without right right no absolutely so yeah.
So that's, see, that's awesome. Because, like, for me, I'm more, you know, I was more, like, I enjoy that. I mean, especially, like, 66 Batman. I en- I, mean, I enjoy all the, the comic book and TV shows and stuff. But Star Wars was always, like, my favorite, right? Cause, and that's when I first had seen... Um, it, it was a while back when I when I first stumbled upon upon your site, and I was like, "Wow, look at all these Star Wars dioramas that are not available." <laughs> you know, I was like, "Oh, like because I didn't know, you know, at the time either." And, and and when and I'm telling you, everything I looked at, I was like, "I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it." Like every you know, because it's all the Star Wars, and, and that that's what you're saying. Like, because I felt the same way too. Like, I love my six scale figures, but. When they're standing just by themselves, you know, you always want to kind of elevate the display somehow, exactly. make, yeah. right? Yeah, I, exactly that. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's where I when I saw it, I was like, dude, okay, like the, the emperor's throne room, right? So yeah. that's gonna be that's gonna be an amazing setup, you know, because I mean, I already have the chair, you know, the emperor, mm-hmm. Luke, Ve- I have it all. So I'm like, you know what, this this is going to totally ele- like it's gonna catch my eye or anybody's eye for that matter, and that's and that's really what you want to do, right? You want to somehow yeah. it enhance your collection yeah yeah so that's a bit of a disadvantage especially for people finding out about us a bit late because especially for those like the star wars projects those are what i view as our custom shop so uh we do these limited runs there's a project uh the people get on board we make that maybe one two three extra right and then that's sold out and then we move on right so um and and I wish I could have like a bunch of stuff and I have it all in stock, but that would just be uh, uh, impossible in, in, in both in a financial uh, sense, in a space sense, in a business well, risk sense. There's just too many, too many variables there. Well, of course. Yeah. You could just be sitting on, on potential dead stock in space. Yeah. If, yeah, you know, yeah, if definitely. nobody buys it, I mean, I, do you yeah. think if, if the demand is there, would you be what would you be because i know you're doing that again with the with the emperor throne room but for all the other pieces as well if there's enough demand is that something that you would consider doing again as well i i'm always a bit reticent i mean it's also towards the community the people who who backed it in the first place they got some something uh, quite limited and then uh yeah well it's it, it still would be quite limited if we did it again but um Usually, I don't like to retread old ground, so it, it, I really have to evaluate evaluate that in a in a in a case by case basis. So, for instance, our our initial cargo hold that was sold out, and then people started to ask for the cargo hold expansion, mm-hmm. and so then it made sense to redo the original cargo hold because there were a lot of people who said, "Yeah, I want an expansion, but I don't have the original cargo hold." <laughs> right. Uh, so. So, so for for those types of types of situations, I'm 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 like, yeah, I can do that. But like, the best of gantry that was something that was that was requested a lot, and then um, we made that, and um, that was the first complex project with uh, that w- with the bigger molds that I had to commit to a minimum order quantity, and that was the first time I did that. So I didn't ask or or get the commitment from people up front and 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 people uh, like making a uh, making an nrd and all that sort of thing and that left me with a lot of extra stock for a lot of time um and so i, I don't ever want to do that again because i've been burnt a couple of times mm. doing that, that that the people requested and then i did it and um i i got stuck with the bill basically so i i have to uh, you'd have or, to do it a little different this time. Like if you were yeah. to do it again, say, Hey, okay, we need, we need commitment up front. If we're yeah. going to do this because yeah. right. You don't want to get burnt again. Yeah, I, I, I love doing this and it's a passion project and, 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 and these sort of things I might just get ahead of myself and in, in, in all excitement, I like with the Bespin gantry, I could just totally see that. I mean, that's the pivotal scene from mm. the original Turley, right? I am your father. It was right around the time there was an Empire Strikes Back Vader. There was the Luke, um, the DX-07. Later, they announced another Bespin Luke. So I was like, perfect, right? This is going to be this is going to be huge. This is going to be great. I want one. You can screw it against the wall. So display space isn't an issue. Um, and then I made that, and um, I got stuck with half of the inventory, which was already a very, very limited inventory, but it Mm. took a long time to move that. And that took up a lot of money and space uh, 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 to the point where I, 
I didn't even break even on, 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 and then you're doing like 12 to 18 months of work for nothing, basically. So yeah, I made a lot of uh, rookie mistakes that way. Uh, and, and you have to, even though it's still very small, what we're doing, you have to be a bit more businesslike in your approach if you want to, if you want to survive. Sure. I mean, there's always a learning curve with everything too. I mean, the yeah. more you get into it and you go, Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe this time we're going to be doing uh we need, we need commitment up front. Uh, yeah. for, you know, because you learn and you're like, Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe not so many people wanted that. So why do I want to do it again and sit on yeah. it? And yeah, yeah, which yeah, I totally yeah. understand. Yeah. yeah. You, so, so revisiting is really a case by case basis, right? So that's uh yeah. Because we, we, we have, we now speaking of Bespin and Luke, I mean, they just announced another, yeah. you know, 2.0 and, uh, <laughs> which I pre-ordered. <laughs> oh, I yeah. can't wait. Yeah. Cause I didn't get the DX07 myself and it yeah. is to be fair. It's, 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 it's quite old now. So I don't mind yeah. the seeing a 2.0, 2. but that, that's my whole thing too, right? Being a star Wars fan is that, wow. Okay. Suddenly that, uh, that's looking pretty cool, uh, to be able to have, to recreate that scene again. And, uh, yeah. you know, and then you're like, ah, oh, it's sold out things yeah. like that. And which I get, which I get, you know, because like you're saying, it's, it, it, people need to be able to commit otherwise you're it, it's a lot of time and, and yeah. resources and investment and yeah yeah that is yeah and for the star wars stuff um like i said a lot of the projects is really just a custom shop very limited stuff for for a, a group of people uh for for for, for the collectible group and then the, the, the for the people who, who wanted to get on that list right like you see custom head sculpts and then there's a a, a list uh, published on a forum and then a couple of you will get on that much a lot much of the star wars stuff is, is and was like that right yeah because i didn't i mean like the land speeder for example same thing didn't yeah. know about it once yeah. i learned about it i was like well that's guess that's that uh yeah. <laughs> didn't have it you know couldn't get it um yeah yeah, I have to look into a way to 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 do that in the future, or maybe redo some things in the future and make it viable. And you know, <clears throat> but it's always walking a very fine line because, like I said, to be affordable with these extremely low numbers we're doing, and people are used to hot toys uh, prices and sideshow prices, but then we're talking. Mm four figure five figure edition sizes sometimes even more than that right um right and i can't compete with that on a price level uh, and so um we have to keep the cost down already uh, and that's because well we, we can do that uh, basically but then um if you do a rerun like like the land speeder i don't know how many more people would need a land speeder and would it be enough to because the, the molds that we did were written off and and but they they have the limited use so we couldn't be able to reuse them right so it's not like those were metal molds that would go uh many hundreds or thousands of times right so um so it'd be like a whole recreation process again then yeah exactly and and then you ju and we're working with such a small margin so it's very unusual uh in most businesses where like 75% of what you're paying is straight up cost cost of the unit that uh, that you're buying, right? Mm. Usually uh like imagine you're buying sneakers or uh, a figure, uh, those percentages are uh, uh, where the cost the actual cost of the figure is is a much lower percentage of what you're paying, right? Right, so, of course. But that makes it a very risky endeavor because you have such a very, very slim margin to work with. There's a very small margin of error. So it's, it's always, it's an interesting and sometimes frustrating puzzle to, to work, right? Yeah. That's oh, yeah. the best I can explain it. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. I hope I'm, I'm hoping maybe people will um, voice their opinions more uh, on things of that nature than to give you, you know, to at least give you some insight of what, you know, like for example, if there was, you know, a bunch of people saying, "Yeah, yeah, actually, I would, I would pick up a land speeder, right?" Just to, you know, because some people, eat, like you said, you don't know unless people are are, are being vocal about it. Yeah. You know, yeah, for true. for me as as a collector, what happened to me was I would look, and I'd say, "Oh, okay, all of, ah, oh, dang, everything's sold out." Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I just kind of, you know, it goes out of my head, oh, and I'm, yeah. I, 
I move on where I feel like people should probably uh, speak up a little. Hey, uh, yeah. is this ever going to happen? Or because then cause that's kind of like how it started for you, right? Like people are like, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. are you selling this? Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> no. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. No, that that's I think that would be great. Um, and now, of course, you're you're doing the DC stuff. I mean, which is which is great. But is that you know? Because I remember that was sometime last year, right? They were now you're now you're licensed. Is that right. is that something that you can talk about or like how that sure. came to be or? Yeah, well, basically, uh, I got noticed by by Warner Brothers, and there's there was a, a lot of people that were a fan of what we're doing, but then. Uh, we had to. Well, no, it wasn't a hard pitch to the to the to the top brass. I mean, they. I think, with it started with the release, the Snyder Cut, where they thought, learned. Whoa! If we actually listen to the people that pay for what we uh, do, um, and give them what they want, give the people they want, and give the people a voice, um, that actually works, right? And mm. guess what? That's what we've been doing. Uh, we, as in the, uh, my dad and me, and then later my wife and Kiara, and well, the, the, the small team at Jazz Inc. is what, we, what we've been doing all along, right? So, uh, as soon as they learned that, hey, this is not just some, I don't know, some Chinese bootleg company, where this is a group of fans making what otherwise wouldn't be made. And um, because I sold my other company, I could, I had enough money to invest in a, in a serious minimum guarantee so that they knew I wasn't full of it, right? And I put my money where my mouth is. Right. Um, and then uh, um, we just had to run the gauntlet of that whole licensing process. So that, that's a that's a lot, ha, 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 of people who have to pee on that decision. Uh, right. You got to kind of go up the up the chain and yeah. up the chain and yeah. And then every territory has to have their approval because we we sell worldwide, right? Uh, and then we had to show what well, we're not interested in competing with any of your current licensees, right? So we're, we're interested in making what isn't being made. So we're not going to do uh, DC figures. Uh, we're basically going to do vehicles and dioramas and you get to say no before we start, right? And then, so we, we uh, ask for approval before we, we make a product and that gets approved. And so like for the 2022 Batmobile, we've been working on that since August, September last year, the submitted the product approval uh, and then um we got uh, put in touch with people who are working on the movie from the set and then we get uh, all these materials and the models and all that sort of thing um and so they know what we're making and we know and they can just well they were supposed to watch uh that so that we don't that licensees don't interfere with with each other and we're very much interested in our mission is to make the stuff that isn't being made right and and, and right. giving the, the and giving the community a voice and 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 doing what the community is interested in and you know it would be cool if i love the stuff that we're making so uh, yeah that that's a bit of a thing but um and so that's that's how these these projects that c c come about then and and so um that took a long while especially for, uh, in the in the approval processes for all the the territories had to approve uh that we sold to the to their in in their territory even though we only sell through our website right exclusively which was right because it's a world worldwide license exactly mm -hmm. but so they liked the fact that we're not competing we're not interested in competing with hot toys and sideshow so we're not uh using uh, uh, uh the same uh, wholesale and retail network uh it's um um and and it, it, it took a while especially for the asian territories to be convinced that you know we're not a threat we're not interested in 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 taking over market share from hot toys we're, not, we're i'm not even interested in becoming as big as hot toys so that that and then um that took about nine months before that mm. finally came to uh, uh, came to fruition right mm. and um and now we can for, for for warner brothers we can really do like the the a little more serious numbers still again very low edition sizes for for a six skill collectible but there, there's more investment and there's more support and batman is is a very very po popular franchise world very popular now yeah i always thought star wars would be bigger than than batman right but that's 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 not what i find at all i mean star wars is very popular in in europe and and especially the usa Right, not so uh, much in, in the Asian market, yeah. 
exactly no and they but they love their batman right Ban- batman iron man exactly. uh they exactly it, w- which is interesting, right? Because different different demographics completely, you know. And uh, yeah, and and I understand what you're saying too, because it it, it must have been some there's difficulties there because the Asian market is exact is exactly that where they're like, hey, uh, we don't want you stepping on toes here or things like that, exactly. right? Because they have so many Fair. like third parties or knockoffs or you know just kind of chiming in on what they kind of deem their market, right? Yeah, 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 and so. So we were very thrilled to get that. And, and um, because then you're not only, uh, you, you don't only have supporters uh, from like Europe and, and the USA, but then the Asian customers come into the fold. And then that allows you to do more, right? Much more right. than we could do uh, 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 otherwise. So, you know, it's, uh, and, and that's why we, and, and then we, we just try to keep pushing uh, the boundaries of what we can do. So with, 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 with cool new features, light sound remotes, um, uh, making things we're, we're for the future, we're looking into making the cars maybe RC ready, uh, so mm. that you can make it even make it into a remote controlled car. We looked into just selling remote controlled cars, but that is a whole, whole different ball game when you're talking all kinds of certifications and, and then, then mm. that's, just, but if you make something RC ready, where people just are able to add their own uh, more, more generic RC parts, hey, that's that's something that's cool, right? So, and it's all these kinds of ide- ideas that come mostly from the closed Facebook group. That that I love to see where we where where, where we can go with this, right? Uh, as a group. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, uh, that's very akin to how you started too, in the same respect. Yeah. Like, how do yeah, I make exactly. my thing elevated better? And now you're still continuing with that same philosophy. Exactly, and and uh, it's the community that 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 put us there and uh, enables us to do this, and so that's what we keep doing. They you know, serve the community, listen to the community, and, and what we'll make. So, the, the, and sometimes the community asks for impossible things, or or um, oh, sure, sure, <laughs> but but it's still a nice puzzle to solve, right? So, um, I mean, you're 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 into the six scale stuff, but I. There's not a day that goes by that I don't get at least one request to do what we're doing in 12 scale. Mm. Um, and so we tried that for the BVS mobile, but that's such a different market where people are, are used to paying like, a, uh, I don't know, 30, 40 bucks for a figure instead of a couple of hundred. Right, um, right. And so for a Batmobile, they would expect that to be like 200, $250. Well, if you want to make a Batmobile for 200, $250 at the level we're doing it with the detail we're doing it, well, then you're neat. Then you're, you're thought you're talking two, three, uh, 2000, uh, uh, units to get to that price point. Right. Well, mm-hmm. we've never done that. And that's a kind of chicken and egg situation because you can put it, put up the pre-order for $250, hope you get to 2000, but if you get to like 500, well, then you're, that I'm bankrupt, right? So right, right, and you don't, you can't. It's too difficult to gauge um, the the demand for that, and in, in, in twelve scale, for example, like you're saying, right? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so there are then, some that like it, but enough. Yeah, okay. If everybody who asked me about twelve scale actually bought twelve scale, then that would be a viable thing. But now, so now we're thinking, could we do a Kickstarter kind of thing, or maybe actually use Kickstarter, like Has Has Labs has done, to see. Um, what uh, what's possible in 12 scale and then we can also listen to the community when they say hey could you do ships but in a more manageable size could you do the falcon cockpit in 12 scale well then that would be um or, or uh, i don't know just may, maybe we, we should go to disney and talk about uh, uh getting a mandalorian license right and uh, doing like um um the 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 cockpit for the, the razor crest, the razor crest, maybe mm. doing the N1 Starfighter. Maybe it's a bit big for six scale, but it could be cool for twelve scale. Maybe do both if we get that license. I don't know. Here. It might it might be a good size for six scale. The maybe. N1, right? Yeah, because it's it's it's, so it's cool. It's so yeah, and it's 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 a great bridge between the 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 prequels and now, yep. right? Yep. So it yep. could please anybody really from that right. that demographic. I mean, what is it? It's this. It's it's the pilot seat and and an R you know an R two slash Grogu you know you know back like co pilot seat and that's I mean the wingspan maybe might be a 
a little large, but I mean, I yeah. think it's doable. Yeah, I'm. I would have to look into that. Um, so, if you're talking original trilogy, like Snowspeeder is almost that's at the limit of what you could do in six scale without getting ridiculously large. And I mean, that's three feet by three feet. Yeah. Cause we've been looking into doing the, um, the tie fighter. Um, mm. but uh, that thing five feet, uh, one of those wings slash solar panels. So, you know, oh. it's mm. so, it, it's so big. That, that's it's tough. That, yeah, yeah. T- cuz I'm thinking about it right now. I'm like a six scale tie fighter. Uh, yeah. We had that request a lot and we actually have the models. I have the design pretty much ready. The thing is we've done simulations or I go to the suppliers and we can do simulations and at the low edition sizes we're working on, you would have to do some kind of resin casting of that wing mm-hmm. and then one wing would be 45 pounds oh geez yeah <laughs> so so not very uh uh, uh hanging friendly because i was thinking that i was i was like well maybe i'd get a tie fighter and hang that you know somewhere to but you're gonna definitely need to get that in the studs uh yeah yeah uh, so the two wings plus the, the cockpit would be 100 pounds right i yeah. mean to, to try to hang that try to ship that so oh true shipping yeah. geez yeah 100 here's a 100 pound tie fighter guys um yeah yeah, yeah. so wow in the same way we do the very the custom shop low edition stuff uh, uh, of like the the uh, the race sand speeder the, uh, the the land speeder, those are already pretty heavy things, but they're, they're, those are very small, and so that's fine. You know, if you do the resin casting and you have a unit that's well, I don't know, close to ten pounds. Oh yeah, much more pounds. manageable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But so for a tie fighter in resin uh, in, in in a low edition size that we usually do for Star Wars. Uh, hundred pounds is just not not doable, not shippable. That 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 thing will arrive in so many pieces. So I'm still working on on that. So there's it's always all these puzzles. How do you get this made? How do you do this business wise? How do you do it from a technical span standpoint? And that's that's the challenge, but that's also what I love to do, right? It's not right. easy. But if it were easy, other people would be doing it. And so far hundred percent right. Up. Right. That's that's how the saying goes. If anything was easy, everybody would be doing it. So exactly. And and there's a reason why there's there 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 there's no 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 company doing the the the, the Falcon cockpit or a six scale Tie fighter. Uh, it is it is hard to do. And if you want to do it right, you would actually need thousands to do the engineering and 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 make it so that you could make it at a viable cost. And then you wouldn't have to do resin casting. You could make a more complex 3D uh, structure uh, that would be lighter, right? But then you're Mm. talking such a different ball game. Oh, at that point, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But I think think you might be onto something with with the Kickstarter, though. And maybe not necessarily the TIE Fighter, because, you know, 100 pounds, huge, (laughs) like we're talking about. But, But things like that, if you're like, hey, Here's a couple yeah. ideas that were thrown around. Would you be yeah, interested? So I, I want to do this, uh, 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 and of course that 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 that's that's going to be a licensed property. So the the 1989 uh, Batmobile in 12 scale might be a nice Kickstarter project to see. As I want to do it in six scale, I'm going to do it in six scale anyway. But I know I can get the numbers in six scale to make it viable. Like like the 2022. If I look at that launch we had last Thursday where the site went down twice i mean my mind was blown right and uh, and we oh, had completely. three people standing by to to prevent just that but it just it was just too much overwhelming even, right. yeah yeah and so regardless what anybody else does in this at this point with the 2022 i have the minimum number the very small number i need it's going to be uh, a numbered edition signed edition and i could do the same thing for the 1989 batmobile right in six scale it's going to be numbered edition, side edition, <clears throat> low, uh, a couple hundred pieces worldwide, right? I can make that, and that's fine. And then anybody can do what they want. Uh, but for the twelve scale stuff, if I want to hit that two hundred fifty dollar price point for the nineteen eighty nine Batmobile, that might be a Kickstarter product project to see mm-hmm. if that's viable. And if that works, then 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 anything is possible. And then we will look into I don't know getting the Mandalorian license and looking into 
the N1 Starfighter and the Razor Crest cockpit. Those are things on my list. I want to do that. No, and I think those would go personally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, because it's it's relevant too. Now, now let's say that people don't enjoy Star Wars like original trilogy, but the original trilogy is really for our our, our hardcore fan base, right? Whereas Mandalorian right. is is current and beloved by most people. You know what I'm saying? It's it's relevant to where you yeah. feel like, okay, I can make this. It's gonna people are gonna be into this. Like, I mean, a, a, a cockpit, Razor Crest cockpit. Uh, yeah, all in. That would be amazing. Yeah. And 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 the cool thing is, um, what the 2022 has shown me is something of a maybe it's a prejudice prejudice I had, but so the 2022 Batmobile, first of all, that was a design that was, I thought at first it was a bit polarizing. I mean, people are really getting into it now, and and the more I've I've been working on the model, the more I'm loving it. <clears throat> but but the thing that was terrifying for me is that was the first time. I was doing something uh, where I couldn't gauge interest at first and where nobody knew how the movie would do. Nobody knew um, what people would think of it. Right. This was before the movie. Like you said, it was August or so of last year. Yeah. So nobody even knows if this movie's going to tank. Exactly. So that was scary. But another thing I was wondering was if something is that new, I mean, no, like from, from the other way, Looking at it from the other way, the 1989 Batmobile, I grew up on that. I was 15, 16 at the time. So that's nostalgia, right? Original trilogy, Star Wars, same thing. Will it have the same draw and power if we're putting out a vehicle that's literally only a few weeks old when we're putting it out? Mm. And that was, it was beautiful that uh, uh, with that launch, that proved that something can be so powerful and so cool and let's be honest the way that thing comes on the screen with the sound and everything that that was done beautifully but that made me think okay something that's pretty new like the razor quest like uh the n1 starfighter where that doesn't have the nostalgia factor yet doesn't mean that that can't also have that much support so for me the 2022 launch was uh, an eye-opener in that way too something can be brand new and still uh have a huge impact uh, on the community and, 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 you know, be something that you want to own. Right. Oh, absolutely. I mean, even, even if you, even if you're just speaking in the sixth tale, the figure sense, I mean, look at the Mandalorian figures that are just yeah selling, you know, you know, they're, they're selling ra- like pretty, pretty good. I mean, the, their line so far is more, it, it, I don't know how many there are, but there's at least I've, I'm gonna guess 25 Mandalorian figures now. Yeah, that's and that true. show's not that old. That's true. Yeah, but then again, I mean, getting a what is it now, 250, 300 dollar figure for a Mandalorian versus uh, a, a, um, an N one Starfighter in six scale would have to be uh, I don't know, north of 1500 dollars. Mm. In something that is that large, complex, and weathered with that much detailing well but, and i yeah. think where that's where a kickstarter or something would come in right because yeah. you're right like okay i can drop two three hundred on a figure if i like you know but do i want to drop you know fifteen hundred on a vehicle exactly. i mean there's a market there's definitely a market right we can see that with the batmobile uh other yeah. things um, and there's and there's something to be said about the nostalgia as well right because you know i too am a child of the 80s so mm-hmm. as we are as we're all growing up or as we're all getting older we look back on all these things and there's Maybe, I'm not so sure about the, the Asian markets because, again, everybody grew up kind of with different things. But right. European and American markets, the nostalgia is a is really big factor in a lot of things. I mean, with yeah. even um, looking at um, recently with, with Queen Studios, when they were putting out polls of what, you know, for American audiences, what, you know, what, what things you guys are thinking of, it's all 80s stuff. It's all yeah. 80s, you know, in that respect. So that, that, there's something to be said about that as well with nostalgia. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and that's I mean that's why I've started talks with Universal Studios because I want for for next year's project I want to do Knight Rider I want to do Kit in six scale. Ooh. You know. Uh, okay. That's, that's, okay. That's, that's that's nostalgia for me, and that's something. What about the uh, A Team van? <laughs> <laughs> if 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 I if I pull off Kit, then the A Team is next. I mean, those are the two things uh, from my childhood. Apart from Star Wars, of course, which was a red the, the red line through 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 most of my life, but 
yeah night rider and 18 man that's the thing and so yeah anyway i i i, I sidetracked you so yeah uh, nostalgia factor is a big thing um mm. i don't uh, i don't know what 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 eighties nostalgia would be for the Asian market, but yeah, you know, who, who, uh, right. It could be different. It could be like uh, you know, Common Rider or uh, I don't even know. Mach Five is something I've heard a lot. Mm. The the racer, uh, the white Mach Five racer uh, vehicle. <clears throat> was that was that uh, was that Speed Racer? Yeah, I or... think that's the, that's the, the Mach Five is uh, the Speed Racer Mach Five is the, that's that's the thing, right? I think so. I See, that's wrong? the that I, that's the thing, right? Like, I, I'm sure somebody in the comments will will. <laughs> so, but you know, it, that's yeah. the thing, right? Because our, our markets are completely different. Yeah. Whereas well, they no, might the, be like, the, the I Mach- don't know about Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the Mach Five, the Mach Five is definitely yeah, that's Speed Racer, and that's definitely that, that, and that's a cool car. I didn't grow up on that. Well, that's really awesome then, because I mean, I, I can't even imagine to, going into something that was just really for yourself really yeah. in the beginning right creating something to now like now you have a license with dc like that has to feel yeah that's a that's a good accomplishment and and, and now you're like hey if i have the dc license other companies are going to look right and say like yeah. you're mentioning universal yeah. well now you have yeah, a little I bit mean, of you know there's some cloud it there definitely now. helped i mean uh, i i got a reference uh through warner brothers they, they love the, the stuff we're doing and working with us and um and our excitement and uh so so yeah they introduced us to, to universal right so um yeah, there's more to come that's all i can say that is awesome no that is completely awesome but i am curious because we are talking about batman we're talking about dc stuff but it, it is warner brothers right so is it is it just exclusively dc or can you do anything under a warner brothers label oh so it's a bit of a, a bit of both so um the way this works is the more you put in your contract, the higher the minimum guarantee becomes, right? Mm. Um, and so I started out with a minimum guarantee that I could swing uh, from my other capital, from my other company. Uh, and that that is limited to Batman, basically. So um, basically, I got all Batman uh, from from the early... Uh, so it's it, every like 66 to current. Yeah. Yeah. And everything in between uh, th- that's all different um, movies and different, almost there's, there's almost different licenses. So uh, every movie I added would uh, increase the, 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 the minimum guarantee. But um, once we make that and the way the things are going, we're going to make that minimum guarantee this year. Um, then you can add, properties for free and then because i am approved as a partner so they did all the screening and everything so that doesn't have to be done again so later this year i can just add stuff from from uh from the warner catalog you know okay so i don't know uh, i want to do the exo suit from edge of tomorrow right something like that that's warner Ooh. okay yeah. <laughs> that would be cool it's not so random, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but that, for instance, would be something that's possible when the uh, when, when um, the del- so the way that we work in the Netherlands is um, people pay us upfront for uh, for projects, make a make a down payment, and they make projects. But that money isn't uh, revenue or anything. Uh, I can. Uh, touch or claim or whatever until we actually make the delivery to the customer right, right. so that's also we did the same thing with warner brothers who want us want us uh have that revenue as soon as possible we're like nope it's not revenue never until the customer has the product so in 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 pre-orders um we, we're already way past the minimum guarantee so we're doing very well uh but for the deliveries and that is where covid and now this war really messes us up it has been messing us up mm. for the past two years um True. where it, it just it just we, we, um, all the time we're hit with delays during uh during the the whole process so i think by the end of the year we're, we're going to pass that minimum guarantee mark and then i could just add anything from warner brothers to my contract if i wish 
Well, and I think when, like you said, once that happens, right, and 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 the product is in customers' hands, the project is now over. We've moved on. Warner Brothers has seen the 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 numbers and and said, oh wow, okay, this is this is a thing. This we're, the proof is in the pudding, as they say, right? So then they're mm-hmm. more they're more inclined to be like, yeah, sure, go ahead, go ahead, yeah, yeah, go ahead, do this one, do this one. We're all because yeah. they're seeing the numbers. Yeah, yeah, and so. I've already had to slow them down because, well, we, we've made all the deliveries of the officially licensed 12 scale BVS Batmobile, and then they get the prototype samples for that. But we've also sent the early uh, prototype uh, or the early production samples that we made in March of the 1966 Batmobile, even though we've made some uh, some more detail in, in paint improvements uh, after that um, for the, the stuff that gets out for delivery. Um, so they've seen that, right? And then they, they've seen the original six scale BVS and Justice League Batmobiles, and they're like, okay, this is this is cool. Let's see what we can mm. do. Let's take this baby out for a spin. But I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, we've got we've got enough enough on our plate now. And um, so they're already very open to talking uh, about adding things, right? So that's that that's good. That's uh, that's good, but not not this year. <laughs> Right. Well, of course, because of how much time and 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 resources it takes to to put into these projects. But it's good right. to know, right, that you're like, okay, um, if I want to do this, okay, we can we can we, this is totally doable. Now it's whether yeah. or not the 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 community wants it. Yeah, exactly. The, the the community it starts and ends there. Um, so, I mean, the, the, the other things that we're now looking into is um, parts for the, the 1966 bat cave. We're starting prelim- preliminary designs there. Oh, really? Uh, like for yeah. di- like diorama base. Yeah. So that's a bit of a, uh, that's a bit of a scoop for you there. Yeah. So uh, like we have the bat computer already um, designed and engineered, uh, but we're still thinking about, okay, what parts would be, so the, the, making the entire 966 bat cave is impossible right we're talking so that that thing would be i don't know six seven eight feet wide because right, i'm already yeah I'm, I'm, I'm already thinking about the car right? right so i'm like okay here's the car and then okay we got computer yeah, exactly it would be you would need a whole room a big yeah, wall exactly just, like, so how, how could you represent the 1966 bat cave in such a way that it is um it gives the feel of the room without having the the entire room, right? So right, maybe uh, you'd have to like scoop up the the wall a little shorter, and then you know, like like you were saying, like with a besta or something along those lines. So it just kind of gives that appearance that okay, this is the cave, but it's not in that massive s- scale that you would you would see like on screen. Right, or or we could just make like separate parts, like the bat computer. That, that's something that you can place around the car, and then there's a couple of other computers, and those oscilloscope screens, and mm. then there's oh, I forget the name. What's that big centerpiece? The nuclear something. I uh, yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> it's yeah, been so yeah. long. I, I I used to know this. Forget me, I'm blacking uh blacking out on this. But yeah, so that that thing would already be very massive. But maybe so. And that again, I'm, I'd have to think about. I, I would have to get pieces like uh, uh, from that uh, and make a, a set that would be uh, accessible to people, both in terms of money and and space and all that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, th- th- those are things that that I've been uh, toying with. Uh, and of course, the 1989 Batmobile in six scale is uh, is something we're toying with. But, but first, let's do the so the the first. A couple of six, next six months is like delivery of the 1966 uh, Batmobiles for for all the orders. Uh, end of the year. Oh, then oh, and then the Bat Signal, where which we're in, in in tooling of right now. Delivery of that. Uh, end of the year, the 1989 Batwing. The next year, we've got the 1995, the tw- the 2022, the uh, the BVS Batwing, BVS Bat computers. That that's already lined up, right? And then. Um, I've got some other things coming, so we're already into 2023 now. Right, and that's not even touching Star Wars or this potential Universal or anything else from Warner Brothers. Exactly. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so there, so there's room for expansion. Yeah, but like I said, I'm not interested in starting a big company again. I just, uh, oh no, no, this is it, it is cool. I'm. It's at a scale where I can still look at the Facebook group every day, at the emails every day. 
uh, and, and read and reply to every message. Keep it personal, right? I don't want to be right. a big, uh, I, I really don't. And to have the responsibility of all those salaries and mortgages, uh, then it wouldn't be fun anymore, right? So, right. This uh, started I, as, as a community passion project. You want to kind of keep that, that, that feel, right? That small, exactly. close group of people and, yeah, especially well on my end. I mean, the group can be as big as they want, but I, on mm. my end, it's not going to be. It's not never going to be big in corporate. I want to be there. I want to, like I said, I I I just love. One of the first things I do when I wake up is look at the Facebook group. What did people say? What did people ask? Uh, and I I read everything. I reply to everything. And of course, I have people who help me with uh, all the administrative emails. Like oh, I can't see my orders. Can you help me pay with this? And then that's, that's right. what Kiara does. That's what Yannicka does. Um, cause I, I do have to do the, the, the design, the development production and, and all the other things. Right. Um, but no. And so, so most of the times I'm just, I'm going to have to say no, right. I can't add that many more projects, uh, or, or just, we have to be patient because I want to get to a lot of stuff, but, um, uh, I'm not going to do it by, by hiring a, 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 a few dozen people or hundreds of people. Uh, and become a big corporation and uh, and lose touch, right? That's that's not what we started. That's not that's not what we are. That's not who we are. Right. So. No, and that makes sense too. Because again, can you imagine if I mean, sure, maybe the success would be there, but then that's the you would end up having to uh, manage this giant this giant company at that point, right? And yeah. then now you're you're not in touch and like what like what you're saying. I like that. It's you you keeping it. Uh, tighten it you know you're like you said you wake up you check the, the facebook you're yeah. really engaged in the community and that yeah. would that would probably with that would wither away over time i wouldn't over, be able to do that I'll, you just wouldn't I would have, have time do, yeah. yeah i would have to give away all the cool stuff i do and to let other people do that or or most of that so no that's not that's not what i'm into and you know what in my career i built a couple of companies um and went from small to very big and it took me a long while to figure it out, but I was most happy when it was a startup, when it was small, when it was me close to what we were doing instead of managing from a distance and having all these layers of people and middle management to go through. And um, yeah, I had cool stories at birthdays and I had a very cool business card uh, and all the trappings, but I was miserable. So mm -hmm. I don't want to do that again. No, I couldn't. I don't. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. I think. I think where you are at right now is a really good space. Yeah, and it's com comfortable for you, and and, yeah. and you have opportunities still. Like you said, you're you're already uh it, it, well into 2023 already, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. you know going any further is going to create this uh this just environment that that you don't want to be in, which I totally oh, understand. Exactly. exactly. Totally understand. Yeah. So it's and it's always a bit of a. Like I said, the margins are thin. It's always um, a balancing act. So, uh, and the, a lot of this work is also waiting around. I mean, so let's let's talk the 1966 Batmobile. The tooling for that took four months to 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 make, right? Mm. And then though during those four months, I couldn't do anything on the 1966 project. That's just a lot of suppliers doing a lot of machining and a lot of work. And it can't go any faster. And you can send me emails every day, but that's just as long as it takes. So make my time to make my time as effective as possible, I have to have many balls in the air in different phases of the project. Yeah. From early design, like we're already sketching the 1966 bat computer. And we got another a couple of a couple of things in our back pocket to uh, we're creating a tooling. No, that's where we're at with the bat signal. The tooling is finished on the 1966. So that's where the part production is. And uh, then for the, the, the so the, the, we, the, there's all these these projects that are into different phases. So the, 20, the 112 scale BVS Batmobile that's done, that's packaged and that's shipping out now. And so as long as you have all those balls in the air and you're timing them correctly, I can keep busy and do as much as I can in the time that I have, um, right, it's much more efficient that way because you, you're yeah. you're you're micromanaging different phases of productions or yeah. uh, manufacturing all that all that stuff on different things all at once to maximize yeah, yeah. your. So, yeah, and so people are like, uh, "Why are you doing a 2022 Batmobile? You're still working on the 1966." That's right, but 
uh, again, we've been working that secretly, but uh, during the time that the 66 was in tooling, I was glad I could work on the 2022 while I was still waiting for Warner to get back on to, back to me on the 1995 stuff that they promised they would get me, right? So um, um, that, that's just the way it is. It, you have to keep this, those balls in the air, otherwise um, it's, um, I, I, then otherwise one month I would be running my ass off and then the next month I wouldn't have to do any, I haven't, wouldn't be able to do anything because I would be waiting for. Right. And I don't think a lot of people understand that. Cause I've, I've, I've heard that too, right? Oh, well, why are we doing another Batmobile when this isn't, it's like, well, because there are different phases and in order exactly. to, you have to, you have to manage this. So you can't, like you said, if you would do this and you're sitting and waiting, then you're doing nothing when you could have been exactly. doing something. Exactly, and then that that's no way to run the business because then that that then there wouldn't be enough money to even uh, yeah, th 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 to keep going. That's just not it doesn't work. And <clears throat> for the 2022, we did have the the good fortune of finally having a project where there was already a lot of um, files and 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 drawings and 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 um, photos to work off. So that's a much easier project in the R and D phase and faster project in the R and D phase than uh, like the 1995, which takes a long time to 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 R and D and 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 redesign. So that it's so th then you get to the engineering phase. Now those are quite very difficult because even if I were to get like a complete 3D file from Warner Brothers, like here, there you go, this is it, right? Mm -hmm translate that into something that could be six scale and producible and made into different parts with all the rec correct release angles, wall thicknesses, materials, all that sort of thing. That's quite difficult. So even, uh, even getting the file, uh, the complete 3d file for, as a, as a whole from set is, is worthless and unless you know how to do the engineering to make it producible. Right. Right. <clears throat> and then, but that's again, we don't have a factory, so that's a, again a lot of talking with the factory. Can can your machines do this? Can we? Uh, how much would be the mold to do to do that? Uh, would the, how many parts would the da the dashboard ha have to be? Right. So that's there's uh, the process behind engineering is so so detailed, right? That's that's yeah, essentially. Yeah. But, and, I mean, and there's a lot of micro waiting in in those projects mm -hmm. as well. I mean, so you could set something up. Okay, so we've done this, and now, like like the, the dashboard, right? Um, and we've decided on how many parts it's going to be. But then you're waiting again on the suppliers to uh, to, to to make that compatible and and tr translate that into molds that are compatible with the specific machines and the materials that they uh, we, would use, or the, that we designed or, or selected to be used for this, right? So then you go on again to the 1995, and and go back into the the next day you're 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 drawing. Uh, uh, details that are because there's very very little reference material for the 1995 so and that's always my every day is totally different for me and it could be a totally mm. different project uh, sometimes i switch between projects um uh, on an hourly basis right so it's it's a lot of hurry up and wait basically no i i, I totally understand that completely uh because it is there's so much different projects going on at once and like you're saying that 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 whole process is 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 got to be grueling as well right because maybe you know with the production they can do okay well we we can do this manifold right now and then but now we're gonna have to wait to do this part and then what? so then you're you're sitting here saying oh okay well okay at least we got that part done but now we have yeah. to wait so let's let's work on this now in yeah. the meantime yeah and okay. and so we're and and we're working on so many different time zones there's actually <clears throat> three continents so most of the parts production and that size and scale, that's all Asia. There's not any viable production left in Europe or, or America that can either do that or can do that in a, in a level that you can pr pr uh, afford, right? But then the design and, and tooling and, and, and at the end, the finishing, that's that we do that in the Netherlands. Then for the 19, like for the 966, we have stuff that that's being done and made in the USA, right? So, uh, um, and and then that has to ship to China uh, uh, for um, to to assemble that into the sub assemblies. Then they come here in the Netherlands, and then uh, right. well, it's, it's, 
you know, it's a it's a worldwide project. Uh, so, yeah, it sounds like a huge opera. <laughs> it's a huge <laughs> operation. Yeah, well, uh, not in terms of people, but yeah, in in terms of but scope and, and through time the and right, the scope is in. And there's a lot of people involved. I mean, um, from from the volunteers in the community, uh, like like Derek, who helped with the Facebook group, to like uh, for the electronics uh, uh, stuff uh, we, we do uh, with the people in the USA that where that, that's actually designed and 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 also produced in the USA, which is I, I love that, right? And then. There's uh, in China and Hong Kong and Taiwan. There's suppliers for for like these these parts or these parts or that. And so it's a uh, yeah because we're only such a small team. You, you have to work with a lot of external partners to make something like this work. Really. Oh yeah, it's it sounds. I mean, that's good to know to to have that kind of insight to say, hey, you know, this there's a there's a lot behind the process that goes into to to delivering these. Yeah. We actually had a discussion with uh, with with Warner Brothers last week because usually when you have a product and uh, we completely forgot to put this on the twelve scale uh, BVS Batmobile at first, uh, but when you have an officially licensed project, it has to say something like "Made in," right? Uh, mm -hmm. And so if you get a Hot Toys, it says "Made in China," but for us, no. <laughs> so uh, we're, we we finally settled on designed designed and finished in the Netherlands. Um, Electronics made in the USA, uh, parts and subassemblies made in Asia, or something like it. it's a, it's a whole. It's a, <laughs> it, it, I'm I'm very happy it's a long car because it's a long sentence. So, no, that's good though. That covers all the bases. Yeah, yeah, and so then and the lawyers were happy with that, but it's not a simple made in China thing anymore. Right? No, absolutely not. Especially if if you're, you have parts from US, then in Asia, then here in Netherlands. I mean, it's a huge, like you said, it's a worldwide kind of joint effort. Yep. Yeah. Well, now I am curious before before we wrap because there was one other yeah. thing I was curious about. Uh, you you mentioned uh, the bat signal, right? Now, are, are there plans to do bat signals? Uh, no, 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 no. So, so no. All I can say is I don't have any plans beyond the current bat signal, okay. especially since Hot Toys um, are probably doing or well said they would so i and i think because they open pre-order i'm pretty sure they will do the 2022 bat signal right 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 for that sure but i mean i was thinking maybe like a batman forever or the 89 things like that if those were you know on the docket or you know thoughts or kickstarts things like that so far the bat signal didn't get the support we expected so mm, okay. we're gonna do this one um and um, Derek from the group is working on because um, we're, we're making it with a magnetic design uh, so that you can attach metal symbols. Um, and, and so we're not allowed to mix and match symbols from different franchises, right? In different movies. Mm -hmm. But the group is free to do what they want. So, uh, okay. So, no, that, that worked. That could work too. I see what you mean. Yeah. And so, and because all of the the search lights are basically military search light, search lights most of them world war ii type search lights mm -hmm. anyway um uh if you have our bvs bat, bat single that is a G general electric uh modified general electric world war ii search light um that is a very accurate representation for a lot of the batman search lights and and just uh, if 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 the group then gets a hold of through Derek different symbols, uh, um, <clears throat> then you have any searchlight uh, bat symbol you want. Right, right. I see what you're saying. No, that's that's that that works. That works. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't so that, too sure because I know that the popularity of that was just you know that particular movie, and I thought, wow, okay, uh, there's going to be multiples, but that makes that makes perfect sense right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, based on what we're seeing now, um, we're gonna make this one signal. Um, get that, and through the group, you'll get the symbol you need. Most likely, uh, mm -hmm. we're working. Um, we're, we're we're we've we've enabled design so that after it's out of our hands, you can just pretty much make everything you want with it. So right. that's no, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, we're, um, 
we're enabling that. That's 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 what I can say. Oh, that's that's a fair point. That's a fair point. Uh, so in the Facebook group, and I'll go ahead and put a link in the description too cool. as well for the video. But so we have the Facebook group, and for those who who never knew knew that uh, where you were from, so we have the Facebook group, and we have the Jazzing Dioramas website. Those yeah, are two yeah, places exactly. they can yeah, reach yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if you want to see behind the scenes, like I said, how things come together or give feedback, vote on everything. Uh, and, and, and so that's what the Facebook group is for. I try to keep an eye on uh, the Collectible Freaks forum a bit if I get the chance. Um, so I might be there uh, uh, occasionally, especially on the, the they, they st now started threads. This is the one of the coolest things I ever, for me, because I started on that forum, right? Right, and right. As soon beginning. as Hot Toys released a new one, they start a thread on that and they talk about that. I'm now a part of that. There's, there's, mm. a, a, there are threads for the stuff that we've we've done and we've re we've released. So if there's a, if there's something on our threads, I go I go there also. If you're not if you're not on Facebook, uh, we also have Instagram, but uh, and, and and YouTube of course, um, that I try to keep up to date. If you want to follow us that way, but if you really want to interact, Facebook group is the best way to do that. Facebook group, okay, perfect. Because yeah. because that's where they because the you're very responsible or uh, responsive. In the in yeah, the, the yeah, Facebook yeah. group, I've um, I've made a rule with my wife recently that I try to stay offline as much as I can on Sundays, mm. uh, but for for the rest, I'm I'm always there. So, um, yeah, and we're and we've been working on a new website since uh, the early early to mid last year, um, because well, uh, as you you've seen from the site crashes. Uh, with the launch of the 2022 battle wheel, we don't want to do that again. Um, mm. So <clears throat> that's coming in June. That should oh, also okay. enable, uh, yeah, yeah, and that should also enable a couple of new features. And then um, I talked to my wife last week, and she she'd been thinking about this during the weekend to get like a, a software uh, plugin that would allow more interaction through the website and people following up uh, if there is a like a service request or uh, or a question about anything so the website should also become better in the cup uh, in the coming months awesome awesome that'll be that'll be awesome so i'll put a link in the description as well cool. for the website your facebook instagram youtube yeah. this is, it, it's been a pleasure having you on um it's been very insightful it's very cool there sounds like there's so much in the future still yet in store mm -hmm. uh, i think yeah. people can't wait i think people no can't yeah wait. and <clears throat> There's one one very big surprise that is is coming. Uh, so we've got a, a, some very cool things coming. Mm. Uh, yeah, and it's been a pleasure talking to you. It, this was so natural. Uh, at times, I forgot we were doing a show. So <laughs> I hope well, that's how, that's how it should be. People. Yeah, that was so. That was great, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you for reaching out uh, and and of course wanting to, wanting to talk and, and and chat. So it has been a pleasure. Yeah, and absolutely, and we can do it again. We know we can. We'll chime in down the road and see some progress. Talk about maybe some things coming, and cool. Cool. Uh, I look forward to seeing the new website and all the all the new products. So, thank you again thank for you. for joining us. And again, guys, all the links are in the description below. I think that's. I think that'll do it for us tonight. Yeah, cool. Thank you so much. Have a good all right, weekend. thank you guys. All right.